Brett Stevens is a, a right-wing douche who works for the New York Times, but they love him because he's anti-Trump. So this is the new thing that I'm sure all of you guys have uh, realized, that they will, corporate media will rehabilitate some of the most odious characters out there simply because they don't like Trump. You know, their bar for moral is, are you against Trump or not? So it doesn't matter the other fucked up things you did. They rehabilitated George W. Bush, the guy who waged an illegal war uh, against a country that didn't attack us, killed a minimum 200,000 civilians, uh, did torture. I mean, we're talking about war criminals here. Uh, created the NSA spying apparatus that takes away our Fourth Amendment rights. This guy has been rehabilitated because he's done some tepid criticisms of Donald Trump. Um, well, Brett Stevens is one of these odious conservatives who now the hashtag resistance loves, along with Bill Kristol and David Frum and uh, Evan McMuffin. By the way, I yes, I know he's called McMullen, but I call him McMuffin because I think it's funny. I like how people tweeted at me like angry. Like, you know Trump said that, right? You know that's not his real name, because I think you don't know that that's his, not his real name. Yes, I know it's not his real name. It's fucking McMuffin. Whose last name is actually McMuffin? <laughs> but no, I think it's funny, so I say it. And I'm going to keep saying it. Evan McMuffin, fuck him. I'm going to call him McMuffin, because he's a fucking douche. Um, so, these people are bad people. These people are, you know, they're for every terrible policy you can imagine. But now they're held up as legitimate people because they're not for Trump. So, yay, they're good people. Um, well, here's what you get when you lay in bed with these kinds of people. This is what this guy tweeted. What single payer looks like in Britain. And he's linking to a piece that talks about how the National Health Service is overwhelmed, leaving patients to wait. For years, budget cuts at the NHS have left hospitals stretched over the winter. This time, it's under the highest strain in decades. So this is the old argument, you know. We've seen this a zillion times. This is nothing but rank propaganda. It happened when I did my debate with Razor Fist. I feel ridiculous even saying his name. But you go, you go check that out if you haven't yet. Um... You know, this is what he's at. Waiting line. Waiting line. Oh, my goodness. Well, there's a few responses to that. First of all, um, the waiting lines are usually for elective procedures. So, in other words, those are not... You know how they, they ration care in single-payer countries? Need. Hey, who needs the care? You get it. If you need it, you're the one who gets it first. So, they ration based on need. Here in the United States, how do we ration care? Based on the size of your wallet, how rich are you? That determines whether or not you get uh, care. So if you're a rich person and you need and you want a chin surgery, yeah, well, you have the money. We'll take care of you. But if you're somebody who's poor and you got a kidney disease and you need treatment, well, you might have to wait a little bit in the United States because, hey, you're not rich. So we do our wallet biopsy. We found out you're not in the top 1% or 10%. So you might have to wait. So, in single-payer countries, it's actually a system that makes more sense because everybody rations care, every country on Earth. It's just a matter of how do you ration it. Are you going to do it by how rich somebody is, or are you going to do it by um, need? So that's the first response to, uh, oh, they ration care in single-payer countries, waiting lines. The response is, there's waiting lines everywhere, and everybody rations care in every country. It's just how you do it. So that's the first response. But the second response is, look at the nature of the complaint. Oh, I can't believe that sometimes people have to wait for care. This is a, a, a moral abomination. Well, you know how you respond to that? Look at what Natalie Shore said. If you're going to argue that long lines and overcrowded facilities are too horrible to accept in a healthcare system, i love to hear you explain why 40 million... With medical debt, 26 million uninsured, and 45,000 dying each year of lack of access to care are all fine. Damn. So they'll say, wait lines, wait lines, wait lines. But guess what? Not only do we have wait lines, we have thousands of dead bodies on that line. 45,000 dead bodies on that line. These are people who are priced out of the market 
they're not insured. They don't have the money. Um, they don't get covered. They don't get care. And then, oh, shit, look at that. Because it's cost prohibitive in the United States for these people to, to get the care, they don't go to the doctor, and then they end up dying. Shit, I got, this pro I got this pain in my leg, and it hurts. I would go to the doctor if I could afford it. I can't really afford it. I'm going to stay home. Oh, motherfucker, it was a blood clot. It just came loose. Pulmonary embolism in the lung. Overdone. Dead. So, now, in the UK or Canada, that person might go to the doctor. Shit, I got this pain in my leg. I don't know what it is. To go to the doctor. Oh, we found it. It's a blood clot. Okay, give this person, hurry up, give this person the care. And then guess what? Maybe the person who was on the wait line, they needed a surgery. They might have to wait an extra day or two. Um, but we just saved this guy's life. He was going to die from the blood clot. Now he's not going to die. Brett Stevens looks at that system and goes, ah, the fucking wait times. Look at this. People are waiting. He's got nothing to say against the system where that guy couldn't go to the doctor and he died. 45,000 people die every year in the U.S. because they don't have access to basic health care. And this was my response in the debate. You know, he's like, here, let me give you an anecdotal example of somebody who didn't get care on time in Canada or in, you know, the U.K. And my response to that is, well, let me introduce you to somebody named Bobby, somebody named Steve, somebody named Don, somebody named Barbara, somebody named Karen, somebody named Shannon. These are all people who died because they didn't have access to any health care. So you can give anecdotes all day, but at the end of the day, I don't give a fuck about them. That's why they're anecdotes. I care about the macro picture. And when you look at the macro picture... Sure, you may have waiting lines in some single-payer countries. You also have waiting lines in the U.S. And guess what? In the U.S., we also have 45,000 people that die every year because they don't have access to basic care. In single-payer countries, that number is zero. So, that's how you respond to this propaganda. Because that's what it is, it's propaganda. You know, you can take the best systems in the world... And nitpick them doesn't change the objective fact that they're the best systems in the world. You know, the World Health Organization ranked us 37th in the world when it came to healthcare. 37th! In front of us, uh, you know, littered in the top 10, virtually all single-payer single, single payer healthcare systems. Now, you might say, hey, that's an old study, Kyle. You're right. Guess what? There was a recent study, the Commonwealth Fund. What did they find? We're the worst of every single modern nation when it comes to healthcare. Worst of every single one. Single-payer systems in front of us. Across the board. So, the th point is, these things aren't debatable. And that's why it's so frustrating. Because they're using propaganda to argue a position that is completely factually wrong. So let's nitpick the better system. And act like we're not nitpicking it. Act like we're describing a fatal flaw that makes these systems worse than the U.S. system. That is complete and utter garbage, lies, propaganda, nonsense. And Natalie sure did a great job showing you how you dissect that. Because we never need to be afraid of more facts. See, what they want to do is they want to give you anti-single-payer facts in a vacuum and say, oh, that's it, that's it. That's the whole picture. But they don't want to tell you the broader context, which is, those are the best systems in the world, objectively, empirically. And also, if you want to talk about problems in healthcare systems, let's start with the fact that we have 45,000 people dying every year because they don't have access to basic care. How's that for a wait line, you fucking prick?